Heroes of Might and Magic 3 is another great game from the 90s and it has really great necromancy. It's another game I'd slept on and I only recently began playing it and really loving it. It features a great necromancy faction and a lot of other great factions too. The necromancy faction is called the Necropolis. You control a fortress. Every day you generate money and you can use it to recruit units or build new buildings. Every week you get new recruits and you get a fixed number per week. For example, 30 skeletons per week. Once you recruit those skeletons, you have to wait an entire week until you can recruit them again. Every turn is a day, so that means that you can only recruit every 7 turns. During the days, you can spend your money on buildings that either increase your resource income, like making a city hall which increases gold income, or a resource silo to generate more raw materials every day. You can also upgrade your production facilities to get stronger troops. For example, skeleton warriors instead of simple skeletons. If you can afford it, it's always better to buy the best troops you can because they cost the same recruit resource and the only difference between them is gold. You can also increase the amount of recruits you get in the city by upgrading buildings like the fort into a citadel and eventually a castle. This is important because in my experience you'll most always have enough gold but never enough recruits. So you really can't have too many of these guys pouring in to recruit. Troops you produce can be left in the garrison to defend or assigned to a hero. The heroes can be marched around on a map with armies and go exploring or fighting your enemies. Heroes can cast spells in battle but do not participate in combat directly. They have equipment slots you can fill out and they gain experience and level up over time. Your necromancer type of heroes like necromancers and death knights have a necromancy skill. This is a few tiers like Necromancy and then Expert Necromancer, etc. What this does is increase the amount of skeletons you can raise from the battlefield on victory. It also allows your heroes to cast more devastating necromancy spells in battle, I think at least. Not 100% sure on that. You can also construct buildings called Necromancy Amplifiers which are like towers that increase the necromancy skill of all necromancy heroes under your command by 10% per tower. This allows them to raise even more undead from a battlefield. As you move your heroes around on the map with their armies, you encounter various sites. For example, you might find a lumber mill that's going to give you more wood each turn. You'll also encounter hostile neutral armies that you can bash up. These are usually blocking an important path for guarding treasure. You may also find neutral undead legions that will join you when you interact with them. In combat you get one unit on the battlefield per unit type you have, and under it is a number. These are your stacked units. Units of the same type form a stack. So if you have 21 skeleton warriors, you'll see the skeleton warrior stack and the number 21. A larger stack will deal more damage to the enemy on attacking because it represents more troops attacking at once. It will also take more of a beating because there's more troops for the enemy to kill. You can also split a stack and have multiple smaller stacks in different positions on the battlefield. During a battle you can cast spells from your hero's spellbook and what they can cast depends on the skills they've acquired while leveling up. These are usually necromancy spells, but it doesn't have to be that way. Your heroes can learn different skills, and some of them aren't even necromancers. It's up to who you recruit. One of the things you can build back in your fortress is the Mages Guild. Any hero you send to a fortress of a Mages Guild will learn the spells from that Mages Guild. You can get more fortresses to get more recruits per week, and even more buildings and income. As for undead units, you've got skeletons, which are your most plentiful and cheapest unit. They come in the advanced form of skeleton warrior with the upgraded building. These have armor and shields. The walking dead, which are kind of like unarmored zombies of a meat cleaver. With the building upgrade, you can get zombies which are armored and carry an axe. 
Zombies seem to be significantly tougher than skeletons are. Whites are ghosts that can regenerate each round. The building upgrade makes them into wraiths, and they're just generally better. Vampires are pretty good in Vampire Lords, with the upgrade are even better. Liches are the ranged unit of the faction. They can shoot clouds of poisonous gas that deal AoE damage. Upgraded, they become the Power Lich, which is stronger, faster, and better in general. Black Knights are extremely powerful, and Red Knights, their upgraded form, are even better. One of the most powerful units in the game, apparently. The Bone Dragon is big and strong and reduces enemy morale. The upgraded Ghost Dragon is even better, and has a 20% chance to halve the health points of an enemy stack. Very powerful. Sometimes you come back to play an older game like this and it doesn't handle well or seem intuitive, but as someone who's completely new to this game, it's been no problem for me. If you are put off by the old graphics, you can try Heroes of Might and Magic 5. It's from 2006 and has pretty nice 3D graphics. I've been wanting to buy one of these Heroes of Might and Magic games for quite a long time actually, but I was always put off by the sheer amount of Might and Magic games. I wasn't sure which one to get and whatever. So I read all the reviews and a lot of forums and just a lot of stuff in general. And the general consensus is, from what I can gather, is that the third game, this game, is the best in the series. And after that, the next best game is Heroes of Might and Magic 5, which is the one with the nice graphics and all that. But you know you can take this all with a grain of salt because I'm sure they're all great games in their own way. But I've played the third one and it's really great and I can definitely recommend it as a good necromancy game.